of course, of course. The actual, uh, actual OBS was causing me to lag too. All right, pack one. What we got? Ah, uh, my boy Tag Tap is back. Granted, he's in a new form, but and he had a different ability. But I love Spirit Quartz. For people that don't know, my favorite card is um, Queen Maiden the Eternal, which evolved, is an evolution creature for Spirit Quartz, which are these gem thingy dudes here. And that's not in this set that much I know, but they do have some of the Spirit Quartz support that I used to love playing her. But he's a speed attacker, so uh, he's a multi-sieve card for fire and nature. For if you're unaware, multi-sieve cards, when it goes to the mana zone, they go tapped but they do unlock both colors of mana for the duration of the game. So if I put this into mana, I'll have zero out of one mana available, but I'll have red and green to use for my future cards, even, even if I don't add um, any more after that. Ooh, I forget your name. I don't even think I know you, but three mana, 4,000, uh, just a vanilla beater. Very nice. This is um, basically a trigger for Aqua Hocus. It's a five mana, 2000 power liquid people. And then when it comes into play, draw a card. It's exactly like Aqua Hocus, but it's a shield trigger creature now. Guess what, guess what, guess what, what? This, I'm not sure what this thing does. I've never seen this before. I believe that it um, kills all 3000 power and below creatures, but I don't know what it does if it's a shield trigger. I have to look that one up. Oh, and I did put a new command in. If you do exclamation point DMP wiki, it'll give you a link in the Twitch chat to get to um, the wiki. You finished high school in a month? Hey, congrats. It becomes a trigger if you have a dragon. Oh, that's what it does. So destroys all 3000 power and below creatures. I believe it doesn't. I don't think it discriminates against your side of the board versus your opponents. And then if you have a dragon, uh, it becomes a shield trigger. That's really neat. I'm not sure what this thing does either. This one, do this one doesn't look familiar to me. Probably should have the wiki open for this, huh? The seven mana thing only destroys opponents creatures. Well, that seems reasonable being, <laughs> being a 7,000, uh, being a seven cost creature or spell. This is get ready. Doesn't doesn't get ready draw cards until you have the same amount as your opponent. Isn't that what it does? <laughs> so I'm having to, I'm trying to call back to some of the later in the um, later in the game stuff that I'm a little bit familiar with. Oh yeah, that was the free pack. <laughs> I was like, why did it stop? Let's see, do, do we wanna go through the gems first or we gonna go through the, I'm gonna go through the ticket packs first. I just wanted to get, knock out the, the free joint, the discount pack. Ho, 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 we have a very rare, confirmed. Okay. Hey, Tajamal, blocker, uh, liquid people, and um, initiate. And it has been confirmed if you play Petrova and you target a creature that has dual race, it powers up the race for both of them as long as Petrova's on the board, which is insane. But it's a blocker. Um, when it when it battles a fire creature, it gets plus 4,000 power. So if, if it's battling a dual uh, Bombedius, it's gonna win automatically. That's really good. Uh, I forget what this is called. I think, what this change? When this different? It looks familiar. At the very least, it's a shield trigger creature. Granted, I'm not sure why this exists if we have Kamikaze Chainsaw Warrior. Maybe they're alluding to some other stuff coming out in the future. And it's like, um, ah, I forget his name. I need to have the wiki open for this. Some of these cards I'm not too keen on. Yeah, Florigil Manta. It, I had like F L O U stuck in my brain. I couldn't go from that. I was stuck. <laughs> I 
Florigil Manta. Each of your light creatures and darkness creatures can't be blocked. Let's do this for the sake of making life a little bit easier. I'm gonna put up a window source. I do oh no oh no that was a disaster <laughs> work with me How's that? That way if I look up the card and I'm not too familiar with it, I can put up on the screen here for everybody. Hey, Ultimo is back. So they, they came out with Turbo Rush. Turbo Rush is an ability or, yes, yeah, an ability that activates when you destroy one of your opponent's creatures. Then it activates Turbo Rush for all your other Turbo Rush creatures. Ultimo here, when his Turbo Rush is active, he gets plus 4,000 power while attacking and he can attack untapped creatures. Uh, my boy Hardy. Hardy here goes along with Dimadea, which is the evolution creature that I want. He's a one mana um, fairy, snow fairy. When he breaks his shield at the end of that turn, um, he comes back to your hand. So he kind of like hit and run tactics. Hmm. Illusion fish. Turbo rush and it can't be blocked while turbo rush is active. Not bad, not bad. What's this bonds of justice? I think that's the name of this card. Yep, Bonds of Justice. Can't remember what it does though. Tap all creatures that don't have blocker. Okay, so blocker wall, blocker wall things. Hey, Aqua Skydiver or Aqua Reviver, whatever you want to call it. Shield trigger creature blocker, and then when it's destroyed, it comes back to your hand. It's really good. Ooh, and his name. I can't remember the name of this one, but it's like a gladiator cyber lord thingy thing. Electro. Electro Explorer Syrian. Hey, I was right. He's a gladiator cyber lord. Look at that. Just a vanilla body. Another tag tap, okay. Oh boy, tag eat that. Whoa. Azonius is probably coming about next set. Yeah, that'd be my expectation too. I don't know what you do, dude. You are Hono the Blave the Brave Blow.
Power attacker plus 3k. When this attacks, each of your other creatures gets this attacks if able until the end of turn. Looks like I need to extend this out a little more. How's that? That's not bad. A two mana human. This is good for Valborg. It replaces main Titan get, that's for sure, in my opinion. Well, I don't know. Because it, 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 it forces all your other creatures to attack. So unlike get that has to attack every turn, you want to be in a position where you, if this dude is attacking, then you better be ready to start attacking. I don't, we'll see how good that is. Another shield trigger Xenopart duder. Ooh, who are you? You don't like this? What's this? This as in the card or the music? Ah, because it forces you to attack. Let's see. Riku the Oracle. Shield trigger. When this enters the battle zone, if you have two or less shields, put a top card of your deck into your shield zone. That's kind of cool. All right, but they also, I know for a fact that they released the five mana, I guess for lack of a better term, battle mages, which are their five mana, 2000 power creatures of dual sieve that each do something corresponding to their color. So all the light creatures do add a shield if you have um, less than six all the fire cards destroy blocker etc so i don't know how good this is going to be even though it's a shield trigger creature when you have all those light battle mages out there e emergency typhoon draw two cards discard a card for a shield trigger very strong and then western barrel western barrel is a ghost i do know that there's a ghost evolution in zero nemesis in this set and that way um it has support for that but he says when he comes into play your opponent chooses a card in their hand and discards it so it goes along with that motif you're saying riku's probably just for bizonega memes yeah i agree Ooh, what do you do in this the um the shield trigger bronze arm tribe um, shield trigger creature when it comes into play put the top card of your deck into the mana zone Ramps, yeah, I thought so is what race is he is he a, is he still a beast folk? He looks like it. I see like the big club kicking it there Beast folk I had a feeling Uh oh, I broke something. All right, we're good. Nobody saw nothing. <laughs> uh, this is this is a horned beast and a spectral knight or something like that. I think this is gonna this is gonna allude to um, maybe Aura Pegasus coming out in the near future. Oh, snap, two of them. I forget what he does. Proved it nothing wrong, exactly. Nobody saw nothing. You are Joe's toolkit. The thing, uh, the evolution, not the evolution, but the shit trigger creature was called Brad's Cutter. I don't know who Brad is. Maybe we'll find out in the future. Whenever this creature is attacked, destroy one of your opponent's creatures that has 2,000 power or less. So that's really neat for aggressive decks because say your opponent triggers Aqua Surfer, they really want to get rid of the thing that's tapped down. But then if we have Joe's Toolkit here, it <clears throat> it destroys the, um, if it's 2,000 power or less, it's gonna destroy the attacker before it can touch it. So that was a nice little interaction there. <clears throat> Another Ultimo, okay. What we got? Ooh. Done this, uh, I forget the name of the charger itself, but it returns two creatures from your opponent's board to their hand and it's a charger, so it goes to your mana zone. In the Riptide charger? Or is that the five mana one? Ab abduction charger. A, jetpack. Done it just, they just gives a creature speed attacker. 
But let me double check. Yep, supersonic jetpack. When a creature gets speed attacker to the end of turn. More than avatars, I'm excited for other dual civ evos. Now, I've seen people use the term avatars in Discord chat. I don't know exactly what they are. If somebody could explain it to me. Well, this is just a this is just a vanilla angel command uh, with the extra five thousand power buffer on it, or five hundred power buffer. New human evolution. Oh, avatars. Okay, got it. Death like Death Phoenix. Arm Raider Gandaval. Evolution Human, Double Breaker, while attacking, gets plus 2,000 power for each of your other tapped creatures. Eh. It, de it deserves an uncommon rating. Very budget evolution. I don't know if it's better than Valdios, which, which we get for free, though. I think Valdios just seems overall better. Oops, skipped that one entirely. Is this, um, Limic? Lemic, Vizier of Thought. Each of your water creatures and nature creatures get blocker. So this is really cool for Reef, really cool for Diamond Dia, if we got those. Other than that, I don't think it's gonna see much use outside of those particular builds. Another Emergency Typhoon. Ooh, Cynia. This is a Turbo Rush. Um, it gets 5,000 power and double breaker to the end of turn while it has turbo rush. So that's kind of neat. I think that's a bigger buff going up to 8,000 power. I believe in the TCG it maxed out at like 6,000 with the double breaker. So that's kind of neat. Just to bash through some blockers. End of the bell. Don't know if you need Cynia if you have Pinsir. That's fair. Because Pinsir is hard to remove because it, it usually is bigger than most power removal, unlike Cynia, which is just a blanket 3000 power and is removed by a whole bevy of things like Tornado Flame, uh, Borges from last set. It's kind of cool, kind of interesting. See where it's going to fit. <laughs> First super rare. I'll come to it last. Another Manta, another Lemic, another Hardy. Ooh, oh, that's the Aqua Hocus thingy thing. Let me remove that. What we got? What we got? Come on, Diamond Dia. Diamond Dia. Nature, nature, nature. Let's go. Let's go. Exactly the one I wanted. <laughs> Call your shot. Call your shot. Sip a coffee for that one. <sighs> Not bad. I didn't even explain Diamondia in my excitement. <laughs> So Diamond Dia is an evolution creature for snow fairies. It actually got super buffed in DMP. It says when it evolves and comes into play, return all snow fairies from your mana zone and your graveyard back to your hand until your hand is filled. And for every snow fairy return, regardless of the zone it came from, you put the top card of your deck into your mana zone. The caveat is that it goes in untapped. So if you return like a whole bunch of snow fairies and you add like six cards to your mana zone, you can start playing those snow fairies you just returned back to your hand. It's insane. It's super insane. And I wanna play it until they do something about it. <laughs> another Manta, another another horn beast thingy thing. Another 
uh, another vanilla. What 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 races is this thing? I have to look it up later. Ooh, who are you? Who is you? You are. You are Rimaru, a Azure Sky Guardian. Oh, uh, let me get the thing back up. Shapoink. This is him. You say. Whenever one of your angel commands will be destroyed, destroy this. Oh, it's a saver for, um, for angel commands. So that's kind of cool. That's really neat. And then another uh, Brad's cutter. I think this is like just. I think this is untapped um, natural snare, basically. If it. Um, when you play it, shield trigger, choose one of your opponent's untapped creatures and put it to their mana zone. Kind of cool. Another Western Barrel, another Tajamal, another Lemic, and another Manta. Another Horn Beast thingy, Bob. Another Electro. Ooh, Freezing Hammer. Doesn't that put water or darkness creatures of your opponents to their mana zone? I believe that's how it works. Freezing Ice Hammer. Let me see. Let me check. Freezing Ice Hammer. Yep. Put one of your opponent's water darkness creatures into the mana zone. Ooh. That's one I'm not familiar with. I think I am, but I can't remember. You must be... Mystic Treasure Chest. The name rings a bell, but the card effect isn't in my memory. Search your deck for a non-nature card, put it to your mana zone, then shuffle your deck. Eh, it is kind of targeted search, so if you have a certain mana base you want to capture from your your deck, you can try to add it. But since it's search your deck, and search was changed in Dual Masters plays, I don't think it's gonna see much use. For, for those that aren't familiar, the way the search mechanic works, it gives you a random selection of three cards depending on the criteria. In this case, it's gonna be all non-nature cards in your deck. It presents you those three options and you select one and then it goes to your mana zone. So it's kinda like, it's RNG um, targeted ramp. I pulled a diamond dia, I called my shot. <laughs> I don't even know, it's just, that's right, and, a, and an Aqua Skydiver. I'm not sure what this card is. You are new to me. Uh, Carbine Explosive Fighter. I know it has like Power Attacker plus 3000. Yeah. Not super exciting, but it's a nice budget option. Actually, that this, there's better budget options. Like you get, you get a lot of free stuff that is better stat line than that. Even though the 5,000 power is kind of decent. It's all about humanity. One slice of diamond D at table five. <laughs> That's the end of the, um, the free stuff. There it is. There's a diamond D. All right. Back to the gem packs. So the way I do gem packs, I keep spending the gems until I have around 2,000 gems remaining because then I start using it for the discount packs. So we're gonna get through those. You think Furious Onslaught Dragonoid Rush might be viable? It might be. All right, pack. Pack 12, pack number 12. Yeah, I was just I was hoarding gold and set two like a madman. Ooh, shield trigger demon command. That's really cool for um Balam decks. That's really good for those. Another man. I don't have like eight million manta. I'm gonna just dust them all. Yeah, it's another tag tap. I want four of these. I want four tag tap. Ooh, this is new.
Hey, what's up, Corey Kai? Yeah, you missed the Diamond Dia pull. Diamond, if you remember Diamond Dia from the TCG, this one in DMP got super buffed. Oh, this is Venom Charger? Then it like give something Slayer and then goes to mana. Uh, this wasn't filled in. <laughs> That's okay. I know what it does. Ooh, what's up, Sandfist with the power buff? You got extra three thousand or extra five hundred. Why keep saying three thousand? Calm down. Calm down. Got extra five hundred. So he work. He's a blocker. He's a beast folk initiate. And if he's discarded during your opponent's turn, he comes into the battle zone instead. Cause I'm used to Vanguard power. You're not wrong. <laughs> Do I have Craze? I have four of them. Craze Valkyrie was a, a day one four of craft for me from set two. Ooh, I, I, I can't even re recall how to say this thing. It starts with a V though. It's like Victoros, Victrios or something like that. I couldn't even begin to spell it from memory. Uh, Vic, uh, <laughs> Vicora Keys. Vicora Keys? I'm gonna show you the name. That's the name. Vicora Keys? I think that's how you say it. <laughs> but Sea Hacker, Turbo Rush. When this creature attacks, you may search your deck for uh you may search your you may search for a card from your deck, reveal one and put it into your hand. Then shuffle your deck. So I got two problems with this card. My first one is that it's it searches your whole deck. So as we talked about just a bit ago with the search change, my other issue with this is that if it searches the whole deck, why do you have to reveal it? That makes no sense to me. I don't know why you have to reveal it because now you're going to get a card from outside of the game when you're on a digital platform. So I understand if it says search for a creature or a spell, you have to reveal it to make sure that things are working. But if it's a search for everything, I don't understand why you have to reveal it to your opponent. Yeah, it's stupid. Another jetpack, another thingy thing, another untapped natural snare. Ooh, Dava, is that Davatory? Davatory? Which is the same as Sandfist when it's discarding your opponent's turn, uh, put it to the battle zone instead. Yep, Davatory, Davatory, whatever you want to pronounce it. Fortress Shell? Is that Fortress Shell? Fortress Shell, I think it's something different. Legacy Shell. Fortress Shell is the nine mana, mana destruction card. Each of your light and fire, each of your light creatures and fire creatures get power attack of plus 3,000. Not that great, honestly. Not for something you want to invest four mana into. It's a common, so it's not too too harmful though yes i wanted sky sword i want all of i want a play set of all the battle mages let's go sky sword is one of those battle mages i was talking about so every light one adds a card from your top from top of your deck to your mana zone as long as you have less than six shields all nature parts put the top card of your deck to your mana zone all fire parts um destroy one of your opponent's blockers all darkness parts um make your opponent discard a card at random and all the water parts draw a card. So if you see one that's like this, five mana, 2000 power, um, double sieve card, that's how you kind of understand what the effect is gonna be. So Sky Sword puts the top card of your deck to your mana zone, and it puts the top card of your shields into your mana zone as long as you have less than six. Very good. 
Yes, Ganta. Ganta the boy is back. I'm definitely playing Fire Nature Rush with Ganta. 100%. I don't know why Ganta is the way it is from a design standpoint, being two mana, 4,000 power, when every other one is three mana, 4,000 power. But I don't know why they creeped this dude, but kind of just accept it at this point. He was very popular back in TCG with um, um, Fire Nature or Firewater Nature um, aggressive decks. And he returns here in all his glory. You like him in Titan Control? Yeah, Sky Sword is very good in Titan Control. Another Victory Keys, Victory Keys, and then this dragon thingy thingy thing. <laughs> Jetpack, Ultimo. Hey, look at that. One, two, three. That would have been cool if this was four and this one was five. Ardent Lunatron. Ardent is a blocker. Um, can't attack at all because most water blockers can't. And in a situation where he's able to block, he must block. So if it's untapped and your opponent attacks with something, it has to block before all your other blockers could be potentially chosen. So you have to keep that in mind with your board state, going trying to be lined up against what your opponent can do. It does trade with Diamond Dia, which is very something important to keep in mind. And then this is the, I think this is a Chimera Firebird, if I remember correctly. Somebody can correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Giga Pippi Ponto. That's some interesting artwork. Yeah, all the eyeballs. <laughs> Western Barrel, Illusion Fish, uh, the Guardian for Angel Commands, or the Saver for Angel Commands. Another Legacy Shell, another 5 mana Vanilla Angel Command. Another Horn Beast Duder. Another Bond, or no, no, another Get Ready. Ooh, Lone Tier. How does Lone Tier work? I think Lone Tier works if it's by itself at the end of your turn, you have to destroy it. So it can't be, it can't cheese stand alone it for you. Oh, this one wanted to translate it. But I believe that's how it works. If it, if it, at the end of your turn, if it's by itself, you destroy it. Uh, I, I've heard about this thing. This is called things like Sapoyo or something like that. It's basically Quixotic from set two, but it's a Snow Fairy. Exactly the same card. So whenever another creature comes into the battle zone, it gets buffed by a 3,000 power to the end of turn. Insane. So basically, in a in the world of Duel Masters plays. You can play a deck that plays Ganta, four Quixotic, and then four of this card and have like 12 two drops that can operate as a 4,000 power or above creature. That's crazy. It's called Bayboyo. <laughs> Lone Tears voice acting is on point. I'm excited to hear it. Ooh. I believe this card is a speed attacker and when it comes into play, you can destroy one of your creatures, and if you do, your opponent destroys one as well. It's like a it's like a four mana um, wrote this or um, Death Mori. Mardox the Shadow Warrior. If I can get the thing to line up. Speed attacker, when this enters the battle zone, you may destroy one of your creatures. If you do, your opponent destroys one of their creatures. It's crazy. Better death, Mori. It's a ghost human, so it, it does lose out on demon command synergy, but there really wasn't a ton of it to begin with. You're angry not getting dole marks. You replace dole marks. Yeah, that's sad. That's unfortunate. Domarks was cool. Hey, but I got Declawise. <laughs> so, Declawise was nerfed a little bit. It went from being 5,000 power to 4,000 power. Declawise, the Terminator.
This is kind of a fitting song considering I just pulled Declawise. So Spirit Quartz have the tap skill. So instead of attacking, you do the tap skill. Destroy all your opponent's creatures that have 3,000 power or less. Then your opponent discards all creatures in their hand that have 3,000 power or less. Oh, that's right. It doesn't hit your board now. It used to hit your board in the TCG. So you trade 1,000 power to get a buffed dest destruction skill. But it does fall in range of Blizzard or Spears now. And you can't... Yeah, you can't look... Before you could look in your opponent's hand, but they took that away too. So a couple a couple changes here and there to fit within the mobile environment, but all in all, it's more it's pretty much the same card. Another human evolution that's kind of butt. Another um, Ponto. Another Davatori. Another get ready. One of those. Another Limic. Another one of those. Another Ponto. Another Venom Charger. Another Ponto. Another Thingy Thing. Chattermancer. What's up, dude? I haven't seen you in ages. Thanks for the follow. Ooh, Hourglass Mutant. Hourglass Mutant gives all your fire and water card Slayer. So Slayer says whenever they battle, destroy the other creature. Is this Duel Masters? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, this you're actually a little bit behind. This is the third set now. But it's always a good time to hop into Duel Masters, in my opinion. Yes. I got Windex. Let's go. So Windex, another one of the battle mages. It's fire nature. So the fire part destroys a blocker. Then the nature part ramps you up a mana. Another freezing ice hammer. Thingamabob. This thing is butt. Shield trigger blocker. Nah, not that, not that exciting. Hey, thanks for hosting me. It's hosting me, Raz. I appreciate it. Did you say ill because of Mesa or ill because of the sound that came from the host? <laughs> uh, Messer Bana is a. It's like Lunatron and that it has to block if able, but they did nerf the power by 500 for reasons I'm not sure why. I thought it was. I thought it was perfectly fine at 5,000 power. They may have nerfed it because unlike Ardent Lunatron, this one can attack tap down creatures because that's what nature block, I'm sorry, that's what light blockers can do, but it still got nerfed. Another Ponto and another Legacy Shell. All right, we get a lot of retreads. Give me some of that higher rarity stuff. Give me some of that, give me some of that good good. Regardless, regardless of my pulls, the first thing that I'm crafting is the rest of the Diamond D is that I need. You, Bonds of Justice, another Mesa, another Demon Command, another Ganta. Sweet. Another Saver. Ooh. Um, Skull Clamp, whatever the name is. Uh, your opponent discards two cards from their hand. It's not random, but your opponent chooses two cards and discards them. In the TCG, you might you might remember this as Cranium Clamp, which costs four mana in the TCG, but this is the five mana version that was in the OCG. Demonic Vice, yeah. <laughs> the 500 power from Mesa got transferred to Sandfish. You're not wrong. Another Ganta. Ooh, Gray Balloon is here. I had no idea. So Grey Balloon is a ghost, three mana um, blocker, and it's one of the rare darkness blockers that can attack um, tap down creatures. Or no, did they remove that part? Did they remove that? Because the text looks different than what Mesa has. Yeah, they, they changed that. I don't know why. They just nerfed Grey Balloon like that, that shadow nerf. 
<laughs> yep, can't attack. That's rude. <laughs> In the TCG, it could attack down. It, it could attack creatures. Another Mesa. Big bruh for Grey Balloon. Right, pour one out for Grey Balloon nerf. He didn't deserve it. Another Senna. Another um, Shield Trigger Bronze Arm Tribe. Another Goat. Another Pliers. Another Grey Balloon. Oh, snap. Thanks for subbing, Congo. How did I say your name? I don't want to butcher your name. LC Kongru? LC Kongru? But thanks for subbing. I appreciate that. You, Ganta, I think that's my third. Oh, Gak Hack. Gak Hack is here. So, Gak Hack is another Turbo Rush card. So, um, if one of your other creatures breaks the shield, Turbo Rush is active until the end of your turn. If he's attacking your opponent, I believe it, it can't be blocked either. Uh, you destroy one of your opponent's creatures flat out, no matter the power or what have you. So it can nuke an Alcadiz from the sky. It can do something small. Another bonds of or another get ready. I keep on calling this one bonds of justice for some reason. There's <laughs> there's bonds of justice. <laughs> Mesa, Tajamal, Gray Balloon. What is this blocker? This blocker pack, blocker starter pack. And then a Ganta. <laughs> Angel, another abduction charger. Uh, Electro, another lone tier. Oh, Giga Claws. Giga Claws is a Turbo Rush card that when it's attacking, your opponent discards their whole hand. So it's a mobile lost soul. So it's a nice big threat to worry about if you're facing down certain decks. Gonta sneaked in with, into the blockers. <laughs> it, was, it was like day 15. They still don't know who I am type of thing. Getting Claw doesn't seem that good. It's good at the right deck. If it's like some mid-rangey, um, like Firewater Darkness deck, I think it'd be a good inclusion for Giga, Giga Claws. It might be... It would be much better if they had Gigazold in here, which they have all these Chimeras, but they don't, they didn't give us the, the big evolution for it, for whatever reason. As far as I know, maybe it snuck its way in here. Goat, Lemic, Thingy, Thingy, ew. The Dreaded, what was that, like a five common pack? Lone Tier, another Gak Hack, another Ardent, and another uh, Untapped Natural Snare. Phantasmal Horrors, yeah. Another Vict Vic Vicor Keys. Ooh, Premium Ultimo. Another Get Ready. Another Guardian thing. So we've seen a lot of retreads. I don't think we've seen every card in the set yet because there's a whole lot of multi-sift cards to go. But in terms of seeing, or in terms of the, um, the non multi sieve cards, we've seen a lot of retreads up to now. Ooh, Pala Olesis. A throwback, a nice little busted card in the rare slot. It's a blocker, can't attack players, and on your opponent's turn, all your other creatures get plus 2,000 power. Very nice buff for Petrova because Petrova sits at um, 3,500 power. With Pala on the board, it becomes 5,500, so it dodges um, Blizzard of Spears, which is a common way to remove it. So then, if you're in a position where you tap down your opponent's board, you have to deal with Pala first before you can go into dealing with all the other stuff. And the Palas stack up. So if you have two on the board, each Pala Alessis becomes 4,500, but each of your other creatures get plus 4,000 power, which is kind of neat. And scale, so on and so forth. You, ooh, Melnia. First Melnia, it's a liquid, liquid people ghost. Um, unblockable Slayer. Whole lot, of, whole lot of stuff going on here for a two mana, one thousand power creature. So can't be blocked. And then Slayer, as we talked about, whenever it attacks into anything, you destroy the other creature, regardless of power. So it can take down something that's bigger than it by a, a long shot. 
Why did I pronounce it Gek? Like Gek Hack? Maybe it's just my accent. I thought I threw an H in there somewhere. Maybe I swallowed the H as I was talking. <laughs> Gek Hack. That's the way I try to pronounce it. End of that pack. Alright, give me some good stuff. Give me the big stuff. Alright, got a very rare in here somewhere. You? Another Sand Fist. Another Trash um, Human Evo. Another Clamp or Vice. Ooh, Premium Bonds. Ooh, what are you? I've not seen you yet. A new contender has has arisen. A new challenger. You are Aqua Trancer. Ooh. Almost spilled my applesauce. <laughs> when this enters the battle zone, draw two cards. Then put two cards from your hand into your deck and shuffle. Oh, does this replace Aqua Strummer basically? Aqua worse than Hulk. <laughs> Not wrong. So this replaced Aqua Strummer, if I I believe, unless they plan to release it later. But this is kind of like a free mulligan, and the game doesn't have mulligans otherwise. So you, if you have something expensive you can't play in the coming turns, you can throw it back to the deck and draw a couple of new cards. It would be transmogrify means if you if you if, if you didn't shuffle. But since it shuffles, it's kind of hard to make it work with transmogrify. Another limic, another ardent. Ooh, solar grass. Solar grass is another turbo rush card. When it when it's attacking your opponent while turbo rush is active and it's not blocked, I believe, then it untaps all your other creatures except for itself. So you can just OTK your opponent as long as your opponent doesn't have removal for Solar Grass before it can untap all your stuff. Let me see if Solar Grass has to be blocked. From memory, it has to be attacking while not being blocked. Yeah, attack your opponent and isn't blocked. Untap all your creatures except Solar Grass. Solar Grass is a lot of fun to play. At some point, once I'm through all the broken meta stuff, this might be something I come back to for some general funness. Unless, of course, Solar Grass does make it into the busted meta stuff. Another Mesa. Dava. Ultimo. Uh, Aqua Trancer. Illusion Fish. And, ooh, Premium Mesa. Usually for me, if I have a playset of everything, I dust off all the premium stuff just for the extra bit of DM points. Wants to order food, not sure what to order. What's open? I know like fast food places are open, but outside of that, I'm not sure. Another Electro, another Venom Charger, another gross thing that I don't care to know. Ooh. Premium this dude. I forget his name already though, but that's really nice. And then you. Gray Balloon. Ooh, another Sky Sword. Nice. Another Treasure Chest. Another you. Another Manta. I, I pulled a lot of Mantas up to this point. Ah, oh, Premium Tanzanite. Let's go. Tanzanite the Awakener. Let's see, where you go? Where you be? So Tanzanite, Double Breaker. Tap skill, search your graveyard for creatures and choose one. Return all creatures that have the same name from your graveyard to your hand. So, this thing got super nerfed though. I believe this thing was 9,000 power in the TCG, which was great because it could, it could tap down and be relatively safe on the upcoming turn. Unfortunately, it's now 6,000 power. 
which means it falls under the range for a lot of different creatures to just attack it. Yeah, but he was seven mana. So you you trade one mana to play it sooner, but you lose 3000 power. I still think this card would have been nice a nice playable at seven mana, as long as it was seven mana, 9000 power. So it's an interesting change, but for the effect, it does have that RNG element to it, but if it, if the game goes long, it could be a nice way to return, say, all your Bolmediuses to your hand if you're playing a control a Bolmedius control deck, because it returns all of them at once as opposed to one at a time. So that's a nice little recharge element to it. What is a creature name or races in TCG? This is called Tanzanite the Awakener. It's a Spirit Quartz. Yeah. Tanzanite the Awakener. It's worse now because it can, be, it can get Spiral Slider. That's true. It does fall in range of Spiral Slider now since it's, a, since it's now six mana instead of seven mana. But it did have the same effect. That didn't change. Another uh, Joe's Toolkit. Another Illusion Fish. Another Mesa. Another goat. Ooh, another hardy. I think that's like my second hardy. So these these guys have been looting me. A lot of the snow fairies have. As I say that, <laughs> I'll pull the third one. Thanks, hardy. Coming through. Lemic. Another uh, Sapoyo. Gray Balloon. Another Melnia. Another Tajamal. Nice. That was a nice pack. Another Hourglass. Another... Thingobob, another Electro. Good Lord, this uh, this vanilla starter pack. All these cards here work with Hourglass Mutant. So this is the Hourglass Mutant starter pack. <laughs> Ooh, Chamilla. Chamilla, four mana Snow Fairy, has a tap effect to search your deck for a creature and put it into your hand. So it does have the search nerf, so I don't know how playable it's gonna be, but it is nice for any type of delayed uh, usage you can get from it. You eating letters, stop. Oh, my bad. Charmelia, not Chamelia. Charmelia. My B. <laughs> my bad. You have your R back. <laughs> another get ready. Another electro dude. Not another premium. Uh, Lone tier. That was the end of that pack. That pack, that set of 10. I've only got one super rare so far. But this one has very rare confirmed. Jetpack, Ultimo, Ice Hammer, Typhoon, and then Bronze Arm Tribe Trigger. Nocturnal Giant. This one is a triple breaker. Gets plus 7,000 power while attacking, but it can't attack creatures if I remember correctly. You want Nocturnal? I remember having Nocturnal in the TCG. Yeah, it can't attack creatures. Oop. A little bit of a lag spike there. Not bad. Seven mana, 7,000 has a nice stat line and triple breaker. Nice little decent threat there. Another Ardent. Just a seven mana blocker. Five mana, 7,000 blocker for, for water. Not bad. Another Goat. Another uh, new challenger. Another one to use. 
Another Melnia. Ooh, Mikey's Pliers. I think that's his name, Mikey's Pliers. It gets Speed Attacker to Darkness and Nature, I want to say. I could be wrong there. I'm trying to draw from memory. You're mad his name is New Challenger now? <laughs> Look at that. Mikey's Pliers, I got it right. Each of your darkness creatures and nature creatures in the battle zone has speed attacker. Another Mesa, another Venom Charger. Uh, Riku, I think that's his name. Ooh. Necro Dragon. Uh, Jagvan? Jagavan? Jagravine? Something like that. It's got like eight different pronunciations that I just gave it. Necro Dragon, Jag Ravine. Who was Mikey and why does he have pliers? I don't need sleep, I need answers. <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea who Mikey is. I don't know if his card actually ended up coming out in um in the during the TCG time. Blocker when it's blocks to show this creature after the battle. So this is a bigger version of Squido. However, it can attack, unlike Squido. And it's a it's a Necro Dragon, so it's good for evolution memes and stuff like that. Shock Trooper, oh yeah! Wasn't he like a six mana, 1,000 power thing? Wasn't that great? Another Sand Fist, Legacy Shell, and then a Manta. Excuse me. Another Tag Tap. Another uh, Shield Trigger Demon. Ice Hammer, Gross Vic Victorios, another Ganta, another Ganta. <laughs> Why'd I say Ganta? Help me. <laughs> Ooh, Techno Totem. Finally got one. So, Techno Totem, it can. I think while it's tapped, all your other creatures get plus, 1, 000, plus 1500 power attacker. It has a tap down effect to tap one of your opponent's creatures. And then he does something else. Let's see, Techno Totem. Yep. While this creature's tap, each of the other creatures get power attacker plus 1500. I thought he had another ability for some reason. Yes, another Sapoyo. Another Dava, another Ganta, <laughs> another new Challenger, and then a Ponto. Ooh, two Techno Totems in the same batch. Not bad. Forever Ganta. <laughs> oh, snap. Ooh, my third Sky Sword. That's really good. I think I've only pulled Sky Sword and Wind Axe from uh, the Battle Mages. None of the other ones. So this is going to be my last batch of 10 out of here. I got to play Light Nature now. Oh, super rare guaranteed. Let's go. All right. Ah, what we got? You're not in this one. I don't care. Onward. You guys should know what the cards do. There it is. There it is. All right, what we got? What we got? Oh, Rainbow. Elixir. Not bad. Got Elixir. Let's see. Elixia in DMP got changed because in the um, TCG, it was strictly a light card. 
but in the interest of giving it a different color, it now has different abilities. So it's a blocker, it's a power breaker, and it gets plus 3,000 power for each civilization in your mana zone. So just for being, um, just for being light and nature, it comes into play as a seven mana 9,000 power blocker. And then if you add additional color, it becomes a seven mana 12,000 power and it becomes triple breaker, just for having three colors in your mana zone. And then it kind of scales from there. Because the power breaker means it breaks an additional shield for every three thousand or for every six thousand power that it has. So if it's five thousand power, it breaks one shield. If it breaks into six thousand, it breaks two shields. And then once it breaches twelve thousand or more, it breaks three shields, and then so on and so forth. Let's see, uh, the, the bot clipped you. Stop spamming emotes. I can fix that. <laughs> All right, I disabled excessive emotes. You can emote away to your heart's content. All right, sweet. Maybe I have another super rare in this batch of 10. Look at that, call my shot. You call your shot and the game is very easy. Another that, another that, another that. Okay. What we got, uh, Illuminati, Illuminati hype. What we got? What's in the box? Rainbow? Ooh! <laughs> Premium too. <laughs> I think this name is uh, Galzak. Galzark. Galzark Divine Destruction Dragon Mech. So this dude has a lot of abilities. Let me move this up a little bit. Okay. So he starts off as a double breaker. If I have another dragon on the board, it gets speed attacker. If I have another fire dragon, it gets plus 6,000 power and triple breaker. It gets plus 6,000 power power attacker and triple breaker and then whenever your darkness dragons are destroyed destroy one of your opponent's creatures that has the lowest power if there's more than one choose one at random from among them and destroy it not bad at all we'll see what we can do with this one in the future i think we're at a i think we're at a point now where i don't need to have the chat box or the window box up. <laughs> Dragon sound like we need to collect that. Gak hack, Tajamal. Ooh, that's a new one, a new contender. Another new challenger. Well, I'm not sure what to do. What do, what do? Phantom Spear Zircon. Blocker can't attack. When this enters the battle zone, draw a card, then discard a card. So, three mana blocker, spirit quartz, so automatically I'm gonna like it. But you get a filter for it as well, so. If you have some junk card for the matchup you're playing, it's nice to be able to just dump it away and draw yourself a fresh card from the top. I'm sorry, do you have a whole premium cup of applesauce? I do. 
Don't be hating on my applesauce. Applesauce is goat. Applesauce is top tier snack. Don't let me find you. Don't judge my applesauce eating habits. Why is it so large? Blame Walmart. <laughs> Another one of those, another one of those. All right, how will people feel if I start to just like swipe and speed through these as long as there's nothing new? Or you want me to keep clicking each one at a time? I'm down to do whichever one. Swipe it, swipe or die. All right, swipe time. Let's get it. Sp speed round, lightning round. <laughs> I say that as I pull another deck low wise. Lightning round. <laughs> Thanks, deck <Declo. laughs> The lightning round king. Three for three? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this pack of 10 has been amazing. It, yeah, this pack of 10 was blessed. I'm gonna have junk pulls the rest of the run. Two, I, have, I got a premium super rare, another super rare, a one VR, then a duplicate double VR. And then I'll pull two of this and then another and then I pull Gallic. Gallic was a card I skipped over, but it's a battle mage, so you know what it does based off the colors that it has. Alright, so that's it for the gems. The rest of the gems are gonna be used for um once a day packs as the day rolls over. But now I'm about to dip into my my treasure trove of gold that I have here. This gold that I worked hard for. Swipe. Ooh, point to, point to another battle mage. Uh, water darkness, so you, you should know what it do. Mm, nothing new. Onward. Mm, good lord, Typhoon. Jesus. <laughs> Ooh, another Windax. Oh, let's go. What's in the box? Ooh, not bad. What is in the box? Another Diamond Dia? Ooh, another another Galzark. So that, that's two Galzarks. I'm surprised I pulled two of those before I pulled another Diamond Dia. That's a shocker. <laughs> not bad. Another Tanzanite. I think that's my second or third Tanzanite. Nothing new. Bonds. Nothing new. Mm, nothing new. Oh, what it? Oh, oh, oh. Got a Remiel. First, gotta see what Remiel does, cause I can't remember. Uh, Remiel, Cloud Break Elemental. Double Breaker, when this enters the battle zone for each civilization in your mana zone, tap one of your opponent's untapped creatures at random. Honestly, it's not that good. I'm sad I paused for that. I'm sorry about that. On with to the SR. <laughs> what we got? <gasps> yes! Yes! Let's go. Let's get it. Second Diamond Dia. Blessed.
I gotta play for some fitting sound for how these packs have gone in the last little bit. Give me a second while I boot it up. Cause holy moly. For the in for the informed masses, what do uninformed you mean uh the diamond card here? Diamond Dia? Diamond Dia is an evolution creature for snow fairies, which are relatively cheap, as you saw with Hardy Captain, the one mana card, and uh, Sepoyo, the two mana card. It says when it comes into play, take all snow fairies from your mana zone and your graveyard and add them to your hand up until you have 10 cards. And then for every snow fairy you add to your hand that way, you put the top card of your deck into your mana zone and it goes in untapped so you can start playing the snow fairies after that. Exception to that, you can't return dead Diamond Dias to your hand or ones that you put into the mana zone. It is insane, mainly because the cards from your mana zone go in untapped. It is bonkers strong. Why don't you boot up? Boot up the thing that I want to boot up. While that's booting up, I'm gonna put Diamond Dia's effect on the screen. It's gonna lag for a second, sorry about that. Diamond Dia, the Blizzard Rider. Here we go. When this enters the battle zone, return snow fairies other than Diamond Dia from your mana zone and graveyard to your hand until you have the maximum number of cards in your hand. For each snow fairy returned to your hand this way, put the same number of cards from the top of your deck to your mana zone. I don't know why I'm spending three minutes to pull this thing up, but I figured whatever. Let's see. The... Does it still work? It does. That's Illuminati. That's how I've been feeling about these packs. <laughs> Cause these pulls have been insane. And I've been calling my shot on a couple of them too. Back to your regularly scheduled music for now. That was a wonderful start to that to this set of a uh, set of using my gold for pulls another VR at the very least what we got ah uh, Del Arcina let me pull it up let me pull it up Terra Dragon Arc uh, Della Cernia. Della Cernia. So, this says Double Breaker. When this will be discarded from your hand during your opponent's turn, put it in the battle zone instead. When this enters the battle zone, put the top card of your deck into your mana zone. So, this was buffed from the TCG. I believe it had the same mana line. I can't remember if it was eight or nine mana, but exact same effect for your opponent discarding it comes to the battle zone they did add the the mana part so when it comes into play it ramps you up by one so nice little change there 
nice spelling. <laughs> yeah, the man edition is good for Diamond Dia decks. Not that it needs it. <laughs> Facts. Ramp to billion degree. Another Gallic. Another Gak Hack. Gak Hack. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing new. Whoa, double VR pack. <laughs> Not bad. Onward. A premium techno totem. This these packs have been crazy. Holy crap! After my crap pack pull luck in the previous two sets, it's nice to have some. Some fortunate gotcha, gotcha in my in my miss. Oh, <laughs> what's up, new dragon? What's up, new dragon? I think this is Dolzark. I think his name is. Super Dragon Machine, Dozark. Whenever one of your dragons attack, put one of your opponent's creatures that has power 5,000 or less into their mana zone. So it works for itself, unlike before, because I believe before it only worked if other dragons attack, so I think that's a buff. It's a card you can play after playing Coco Lupia. So you go turn three Coco Lupia, turn four into um, Dolzark here, which is a nice nice um, little curve action going on. And then should he live for the turn, he can start attacking and removing your opponent's board while you keep putting more dragons into play. So nice little one-two punch there. It, do it goes pretty well with um, Galzark that we just pulled not too long ago, because it is a fire dragon to fulfill the triple breaker um, the triple triple breaker portion of it. Shipwink, shiklick. What we got? So we did get a new card here <laughs> in the midst of all this. We got Crystal Spin Slicer, which is an evolution for liquid people. So your Aqua Hulkus, those cards. It's a blocker and that's basically it. It's a blocker and it evolves on liquid people. But it, unlike other nature or water blockers, it can attack. So it's a 5,000 power beater for two mana. Not bad. You getting jealous of my luck? Never forgetty that I pulled Bomedius on like pack 98 out of 100 in set one. <laughs> I paid my dues. I, pay, I paid my dues to get here. <laughs> More VRs. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, the three mana 4K uh, starter pack here. Double tag tap, I dig it. Nothing new. Nothing new. Nothing new. Another spin slicer. Not bad. Yo, double premium VRs. Let's go.
Oh. <laughs> so we do got a new contender here. You know what? This song that we're listening to right now is called Redemption. That's a very fitting song for my pack luck here. As I mentioned before, my pack luck has been kind of atrocious up to now. I'm gonna play it again. We're gonna play that song again. We're playing it again. But this card here is Heavyweight Dragon, who says, Double Breaker, tap skill, destroy up to two of your opponent's tap creatures that have 8,000 power or less. So, I don't think that's combined power, 8,000 or less. I think it's two separate creatures that have 8,000 power or less. So you can choose like two 7,000 power creatures, for example. I believe that's the way it works. These two VRs work together very, very well. So yeah, very nice card, as long as you can combine it to um, get your opponent's stuff tapped down. You can like try to two for one them for a tap down. And it has a nice stat line to, to survive um, being tapped down in the first place. Another arc, another arc, let's go. We're we're putting we're pulling the pieces together. We're assembling Exodia to do some damage here with upcoming decks. What 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 is this? Not a pack that has a VR in it. What is this bad luck that I'm having right now? <laughs> I know what I want, but I'm, I'm not gonna say it. Cause if I say it, it's not gonna happen. But if I think it really hard, it's gonna be the card that's here. I was wrong, not what I wanted. <laughs> but I'll take Brazenega. <laughs> I'll take it. So this is Necro Dragon uh, Bryzenega, who says, when this enters the battle zone, randomly add three of your shields to your hand, you may use shield trigger. So if you pack your deck with a lot of shield triggers in it, obviously this would be a nice thing to use. It also works as a way to refill your hand should you be like in a situation where you need to have a resource added to your hand and you're playing against something that might be a little bit slower. Like say you're like in a top deck in war against your opponent, you can throw this down and get three cards added to your hand. Granted, it makes you a little more vulnerable, but it's something that you could potentially use. It combos well with um, all the battle mages that add shields to you. So you can go Bryzenega, the next turn you can play like a sand fist to add mana, or not sand fist, but a sky sword to add a card from your to your um, shield zone, or or any of the other light base battle mages. I should do a total count of SRVR at the end. It feels much more than a higher rate. That's because my account got whitelisted. You didn't know that. I got friends in high places. So I got an SR, one, two, three, four, four VRs in that set of 10. And then as you guys were saying, I got eight, uh, eight VRs in the last section. Not bad, not bad, pretty good. 
And we have at least um, 40 more packs to go. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, premium hardy. Premium Gallic and another Sky Sword. I digs. I digs. Western Barrel. Okay, nothing else new. Windax and Pointa. Another starter pack for Hourglass Mutant. I think the only battle mage I'm, I haven't received yet is Estol, so I'm waiting for that one to pop up. Nothing new. Another one of those, another Charmilla, Charmilia. Another Ganta, another Ganta. So no VRs or SRs, but considering the previous like 30, 40 packs, I was due for something like this. So I'm not too, not too upset. So we have 30 more packs to go. VR guaranteed this round. Another Deco, another Declo. Another Declo. Yeah. Ooh, what we got? What's in the box? And another Declo? Good lord. <laughs> I love you too, buddy. Another Elixir? I'll take it. I'll take it. Declo wants me to play um, Declo Control or something like that. It's like it's been destined. Did you destined? <laughs> Nothing new. Another Rumio. Rumio. Another Solar Grass. It's been a while since I've seen Solar Grass. All right, last 20 packs. I do want at least one more Diamond D so I don't have to craft it. Oh, guaranteed super rare. Let's go. Another Sky Sword, I dig it. Double VR, let's go. Very nice, I dig it. Premium Western Barrel. Ooh, pointer. Another Galzark. Or I'm sorry, Dolzark. Another Dolzark. Oh, there it is. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Let's go! Yes! That's the boy that I was thinking about before. So this is Bombazar, or what do you call it, Balbazark? Now, Brando, let's not use that language in here, please, sir. Thank you very much. Bulbazak. So the English version was Bombazar. The Japanese version is Bulbazak, but what he does, he, he actually got changed. So you might remember this card as the card that destroyed the TCG back in the day, because it had an extra turn effect and it worked with soul swap. But what he says here is when it enters the battle zone by summoning, which means from hand or from your shields, well, if it's a shield trigger, of course, but when it's played from hand until the start of your next turn, you can't use shield trigger. If this is the 10th turn or later, take an extra turn after this turn. This doesn't trigger if it's already an extra turn. So you have to prolong the game to the point to where on your, if it's your 10th turn and beyond, then you get the extra turn effect. If you play it before your 10th turn, on your opponent's next turn, when they attack you and break your shields, you can't activate shield trigger at all. 
So it's a nice, it's a big change for it, but I think it's a good change that it makes it much more of a balanced card. You can tailor your deck to prolong the game to be beyond 10, um, your 10th turn and try to OTK your opponent down, but you can't just like play it free and clear and not have to worry about repercussions after that. I think it's very good. It's one of the cards that I wanted because I do hope to play something with it in the future. Because even though I do, I hated the old version for ruining the TCG and like kind of being that last pariah, I do like the change that they made for in the, the mobile game. So I'm excited to try it out. Now give me another Diamond Dia. Nothing new. Skip one, my B. Let's see, last, last 10. And then we have a VR guaranteed in here. Maybe, hopefully that's not the only <laughs> VR we get. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> Nothing new. Nothing new. Good lord, I, I pulled three of those in this set. I'm gonna have so much um, DM points after this, just off of VRs and duplicate VRs. It's gonna be crazy. <laughs> oh, last pack, best pack. Ah, uh, not bad. Ah, not bad at all. Oh, I have a DM one pack to open. I'll, I'll say that for a rainy day. So people want to know how many packs did I pull? I had 10,000 gems and I used, I bought one pack for a discount and then I spent 7,500 of it, which is, that's five sets, if my math is right. Good Lord, secret missions. Hey, I got enough to buy another pack. <laughs> I'll, I'll save it though. Let me do some. Let me do some tabulating. How many packs I pulled? So gems, it was fifty-one packs. Fifty from gems plus one discount, and then from gold, that was seventy packs. And then tickets was well, another 10 packs. So 131 packs. Yeah, cause I, I started with, I started with 10,080 or something like that. 10,580. Quick maths. Change my menu before Lupico starts singing. So 10, 580 divided by 150. 70 and a half, so basically 70 packs. So then 70 plus 51 plus 10. Yeah, all right, 131 packs. Let's 
Let's see. Click this option. Uh, set three, super rare. So I pulled uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight super rares. So 131 packs times five is 655 cards I saw. Then eight divided by 655 times 100. 1.2% of the cards I saw were super rares. That's not, that's not too terribly crazy. Yeah, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then VRs. Good Lord, seven Remiels. Let's see, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 11, 12, 18, 21, 22, 23, 30, 31, 33. So 33 divided by 655 is 5% of my packs were VRs. So, even though it, my pack luck <clears throat> seemed insane, I was actually like within average based off what a tool is saying. There's just the number of packs I open. Yeah, opening 130 packs gives you much better chances of seeing all the good stuffs.